Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video is going to be real nice and simple. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more practice working with objects. So specifically, I, want, I just want to make sure that it's clear that when you create a class and you instantiate it into an object, you basically have an entity of this type we created, in this case, user. So we're defining a custom type when we create a class and you can use it as if it's any other typed variable. So we can create a collection such as a vector using it or we can pass it as arguments or return it from functions and so forth. So it shouldn't be too complicated, it should be pretty simple and let's just, uh, let's just get to it. But first, you know what? You gotta check out our sponsor. That's right, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We created this user class, first thing, so make sure you got that. And then inside of main, we're going to create a user just like that. And you can assign stuff to the data members of this very easily and nothing too crazy. But you can actually create a vector of these users. So this is going to be of type user and then you could just call it users. Now when you're using vectors, you need to make sure at the top you include vector. So make sure you type that out. I always forget to do that, but I did it ahead of time for this one. So I'm ahead of the game. Now what you can actually do is you can add this user that we just created to this vector. So you can say users.pushback and pass in user. Then what we can do is we can access that as if it was any other element inside of this vector. So we could say users and then index zero and then we can access the members. So we could say first name. So this should output Caleb. Make sure you're compiling with C++11 and when you get the output, you should get Caleb. Cool, so that's one way you can add people to vectors. Another thing you can do is just call the constructor directly. So that would look like this. You might see that, and basically what's going on here is we're creating a user inline, so this is a different user than the one we have here. This is going to instantiate it to the default state because we're just calling the basic constructor here. So it's just going to have a blank first name. So when we compile and run, it's not going to output anything, it's just going to be an empty string. Now just to get a little bit more practice, we're going to create a function, and basically what I want it to do is I want it to insert a user into this vector, but only if that user doesn't already exist in the vector. So it's basically a way to enforce uniqueness within this vector. So let's just jump in, let's call it add user if not exist. <laughs> it's kind of a long function name, but it's very clear what's going on here. And we'll talk about the return here in a second, but for now, let's just make it an integer. And what are the parameters going to be? Well, we're going to pass in the vector, and that's going to be of type user, so just like the type we defined down here, and we can call it the same name if we want, and we can pass it as reference. That way we can change this vector. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to add a user to the vector and see it outside of the, uh, the function itself. If we wanna be able to see the users that have been added down here, then we'll want to make sure we pass as a reference. The other thing we're going to take is a user, like so. So it's a variable with the name user of type user. And here's what we're gonna do. We're going to do a for loop and basically iterate through each of the elements inside of users and see if any of them have the same data as this one here. So int i equals zero, i less than users dot size, i plus plus. Now we can do a comparison and if they match, then here's what we're gonna do. We're just going to return the index of that user. So we'll just return i. So then in main, we can reference that index to grab that element. Now, if it goes through the entire vector and no user is found that matches the data, then here's what we're gonna do. We're going to push back and add that user to the vector. So we'll say users.pushback and we're going to pass in that user. And then for the return, all we have to do is pass in the length of the vector minus one. So we could just say return users.size minus one. That'll give the index of the element we just added, which is exactly what we want if we're adding it to the end of the vector. All right, cool. The only thing here is the match. We need to figure that out. So how do you compare to see if these things are matched? 
Well, there's lots of different ways you could do this, and it really comes down to what you want to do. So what I'm going to say is if the users have the same first and last name, I'm going to consider them the same entity, and then I'll just return the one that already exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say users of I dot first name equal to user dot first name, and users of I last name is equal to user dot last name. So if this user has the same first and last name as this user right here, then they are considered a match, and then we'll return the one that already exists. All right, so that should work. Now let's uh, just compile, make sure we don't have any syntax errors. We don't, now let's do some testing in main just to make sure it works. Let's uh, get rid of this here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to create three users. So we'll say user, user one, user two, user three. This also shows you can create three of them on the same line, and that's perfectly legal. All right, so I just gave data to each one of these users, user one, two, and three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to basically create another user, which will be the one we want to add to this vector. But before we do that, let's add each one of these to the vector. We'll just say users.pushback and put each one of these in here. Now let's create a new user. We'll just use the name user, which actually hasn't been used because we just have one, two, and three attached to each of them. So this one should be fine. And then what we're going to do is let's make the first and last name Jake and Johnson. All right, so there we set up the data. And now what we want to do is we want to call that function. Let's just make sure we get the name right. It is add user if not exists. Add user if not exists, and we're going to pass in user, and as well, we're going to pass in the vector users. Now, this should return an index, so let's just output it. Now, let's compile and run and see what we get. All right, we run and we get two. Let's scroll up a little bit. So the reason we're getting a two is because we're actually passing in an empty user here to the pushback method, which I did earlier. We actually don't want to do that because that's going to mess up our results. I really just want three users, this one being index zero, index one, and index two. So the result that should be returned is one because this has a match to the, the, the user down here. So let's compile and run and make sure we get one as a result. And we do. Now, if it's a situation where they do not match, let's say we have Jacob, it'll add that element and return its index, which should be zero, one, two, three. So if we input it now, we should get the value three. And indeed we do. Now at this point, the vector should be changed. So from this point on, that vector size is going to be four. So if we say users.size, let's just make sure that the value is indeed four. When we run and output, you see we get the value four.